All right, welcome back everybody. It's been a while, but uh, today we're gonna be talking about how Eddie Slimane saved Saint Laurent. Now, before I get into a bit of the details, I'm gonna go over the history of the brand very briefly, just for a bit of context. Saint Laurent was founded in 1962 by Yves Saint Laurent. People tend to overlook the fact that he was one of the first to popularize ready-to-wear in fashion. Before him, the big houses mainly focused on couture, but that only appealed to a very select few, very, very rich women. So this was his attempt to democratize fashion. And from then, on, the house of Eustace Laurent slowly grew into the powerhouse brand that we kind of know today. However, by 1992, the brand's profits slowly started to decline and the company was actually sold to a pharmaceuticals company for whatever reason, I don't know. But at this point, Yves Saint Laurent was only designing the couture side of the house and various different designers were being brought in to design the ready-to-wear side. In 1999, the Gucci group bought YSL and got Tom Ford, who was currently designing for Gucci at the time, to also design the ready-to-wear at YSL. Tom Ford did a very good job at Gucci in reinventing the brand, but he didn't manage to differentiate the two different design languages very well, and he was actually quite disliked by Yves Saint Laurent himself. In 2002, the couture side was shut down due to Yves Saint Laurent's drug abuse and alcoholism. After Tom Ford's departure from the Gucci group in 2004, Stefano Pilati was brought in to take his place. The brand was slowly declining for quite some time now, and in 2008, following Yves Saint Laurent's death, stores started to close down in the US in very key cities, especially like uh, New York and LA, even like the first US YSL store open was also shut down. So now if we fast forward a bit to the current moment, Saint Laurent's doing quite well actually. So what, what could have happened in this short period of time to reverse such a long era of decline? Well, it was all because of Adi Slimane. In 2012, Eddie Slimane was announced as the creative director of Saint Laurent. I forgot to mention earlier that Eddie Slimane actually worked at Saint Laurent as a menswear designer in 1996, then he left in 2001 for Dior Home. He even turned on a job at Jill Sander, which is really weird to think about now, uh, knowing the Jill Sander aesthetic that we have. Uh, Eddie's final show at Saint Laurent was called The Black Tie, and this was the first introduction to uh, his very like super skinny silhouette that he's widely known for. At Dior, he just further uh, solidified this silhouette. Karl Lagerfeld even said that one of the reasons why he was inspired to lose weight was to be able to fit into an Eddie Slaman suit. He lost like 90 pounds, which is just insane. Like that's like a whole ass kid. At Dior, Eddie introduced these new jeans called 21 centimeter, 19 centimeter, and 17 centimeter, which were named after the length of the leg opening at the bottom of the jeans. While it doesn't really seem too special right now, it was actually considered pretty slim back in the day, like the 19 and 17 centimeters specifically. Jeans were oversized, baggy, and like deep blue. Think about like Jenko jeans, for example, and then all of a sudden, these slim black jeans just started popping up everywhere. Adi Slimane's reappointment to Saint Laurent was very controversial. As soon as he was made creative director, he made two large changes that caused a lot of the public to be outraged. Firstly, he changed the name from Yves Saint Laurent to Saint Laurent Paris. He still kept the YSL logo, but the brand was officially Saint Laurent Paris. And secondly, and pretty ironically, he decided to base the brand out of his creative studio in LA instead of Paris. As soon as all this happened, a shirt that says Ain't Laurent without Eves in the Saint Laurent font came about and started to uh, circulate the internet. The whole ordeal was settled with a eventual lawsuit. Despite the public outrage over the changes, there are people that say all publicity is good publicity. So in a way, it's it could be considered just good marketing. The change is also indicative of the rock star and rebellious chic, like I don't really care type of aesthetic that was about to come. So what made Hedy Slimane so successful at Saint Laurent? Well, this one article I found noted some of the reasons pretty well, I'm gonna put it on the screen. It said that Hedy wanted to bring a new male image to the forefront of the culture, pale and rakish, sexually ambiguous, a radically different look from the Versace and Gucci types that were consistently muscular, wholesome, and with classic good looks. 
To me, what also really helped Saint Laurent grow was exclusivity. Of course, the luxury brand is going to be exclusive, but I'm mainly referring to the sizing and the style. Not everyone could fit into the Hedy Slimon wardrobe. I'm not going to speak on the controversy on whether this is ethical or not, but I'm simply going to say that it worked in creating a certain level of cool. Not everyone could rock this style, but that's what made people want to fit into it even more. So now I'm going to go over a few of the staple pieces in the Hedy Slimane wardrobe. I just want to note that this aesthetic isn't really going to seem so unique anymore, but a big reason for that is because Hedy Slimane popularized it and then the fast fashion retailers kind of ran it into the grave. Firstly, it's the jeans. The jeans are very skinny, they're black, sometimes they're wax, sometimes they're also actually light blue. There's distressing all over. Hedy always liked to use Japanese denim for his jeans. These were controversial due to how skinny they were. They were very tight and they almost looked like leggings, which in the beginning put off a lot of people. The skinny trend is out at the moment, but it's only a matter of time until it makes a return. Secondly is the boots, the Chelsea boot. The most popular Chelsea boot by Hedy Slimon, probably the Wyatt's. Here are some examples. There's the 40 centimeter heel or the 30 centimeter heel. And sometimes they have harnesses, black color or a tan suede color. I'm sure a lot of people remember there's a time where almost like every single male celebrity was caught wearing these. Here are just a few examples. Especially Harry Styles wore them like a lot in almost like every single pick for a period of time. He's wearing the suede tan harness Wyatt boot. These were also pretty controversial due to the height of the heel. Most men's boots at the time did not have a 40 centimeter or 30 centimeter heel. This was obviously seen as pretty feminine at the time. Skinny jeans and heels on guys was just ridiculous. Obviously gender neutral clothing nowadays is quite trendy, but back then it was seen as almost like outlandish. So Hedy pushed a traditionally feminine silhouette and turned it into something that most guys wanted to wear. He's not the most fashion forward designer, but he's a master of designing clothes that make guys look good and feel good in, and that deserves respect in its own right. Finally, the leather jacket. He made tons of leather jackets in his time, and there are just a few examples. Pair this all together sometimes with sunglasses, and that's the Hedy Simone look. There are also a few other iconic pieces during this time, such as the teddy jacket, the polka dot shirt, the surf sound bomber, as well as these high top basketball sneakers that he definitely didn't pioneer, but his influence on high tops during this time was undeniable. Besides the introduction of the Rockstar Chic to the house, there were also some other pretty large changes made during Slimane's time. I said earlier that the design studio was relocated to LA. It's crazy to think about now, but there was actually a time where LA wasn't seen as stylish at all by the high fashion crowds of Paris and Italy. But it was, however, the land of the subcultures and those subcultures aesthetics were brought to the luxury world with the help of Hedy Slimane. YSL Couture that was also shut down after Saint Laurent's death was brought back in 2015. And finally, connections to the music world were brought back to the house, which was not at all a unique thing at the time, but it wasn't quite capitalized by Saint Laurent before Hedy Slimane. He was known for bringing in most notably Marilyn Manson and Courtney Love for campaigns. So looking at the data, Saint Laurent brought in 472.8 million euros in 2012 before his appointment and that revenue almost tripled by the time Hedy left in 2016. That revenue has kept growing since and I'd like to say that Hedy Salman was the one who brought Saint Laurent back into mainstream relevance. Saint Laurent is currently being designed by Anthony Vacciarello. Hedy Salman is currently designing under Celine which is a, another controversial but commercially successful appointment. Love him or hate him, you just can't deny that he's a master of sales. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please show me some love. Uh, likes, comments, subscribes, everything helps. And um, I'll see you guys all later.